Well, it turns out that the Queen of England has died at the age of 96. And, you know, she was obviously not having the best health up until the end of her life, which is not, you know, uncommon for people who are older age. But uh, I'm seeing a lot of outpouring of grief on Instagram, especially from a lot of Hollywood celebrities, which is kind of interesting. Uh, when you have the Jesuit connection to Hollywood, the Jesuit Illuminati connection, which I'll be getting to uh, about the whole papal connection to the royal family in, in uh, the UK. Uh, and if this offends anybody, I, I quite frankly don't care. Uh, the simple fact of the matter, I'm just going to be blunt about it, is that you know while she may have done some good stuff, uh, she was still a servant of her master, the black pope and his henchmen, the white pope in Rome. That's just the kind of the crux of the matter. Um, let me just read this article. But basically, uh, but before I, I say that, and this video is not really scripted, it's just kind of on the spot because it's just 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 this news just came in basically of this of this whole thing happening. But apparently she had uh, she was on the throne for about 70 years. So she was pretty long. Uh, I think, wasn't it like one of the longest reigning monarchs, I think, ever in UK history? I don't know. But basically, uh, and for those of you who don't know, this is what she looks like right here. But she was born on April 21st, 1926 and died just today, actually, September 8th of 2022. She was, again, 96. But uh, inherited, like, you know, just outpouring of all this news. Uh, again, the news just came in, like, just today, very recently. Um, so, I mean, it's been flooding my inbox, but the bottom line is, like I said, the subject of this video is the fact that, again, you know, she may have done some good stuff. She may have, you know, been, a, been I guess, been a nice person, you could say, but the bottom line is, is she was still a servant of her masters, her Jesuit masters in Rome, the Black Pope and his hen the King of the Arcane, a cult leader, the Black Pope and his henchmen, the White Pope. That's how I often like to address those, those disgusting servants of Satan over in the Vatican, plain and simple. But let me just, again, go full screen. Uh, versus scripture, I, I just do want to briefly cover on this whole thing. On the fact that the Vatican does rule over the kings and queens of the earth, you could say, in this matter. Uh, Revelation chapter 17, verse 18. And the woman which thou sawest is that great city which reigneth over the kings of the earth. Now, in, modern, in a modern setting, that would be the presidents of the nations, like uh, Jesuit trained Joe Biden and his you know, cronies in his administration, or you got Obama and Trump too, by the way, Trump was also Jesuit trained. Uh, he went to, um, I believe it was either Georgetown, either Georgetown or Fordham, but both of them are Jesuit schools. But let's go back to the news articles showing that, you know, she was just another servant of Rome. And again, if this offends anybody, well, you know, the truth is, is going to hurt some people's feelings, but as uh, Ben Shapiro would say, facts don't care about your feelings. So here you got this first article. And I'm not going like, to read all these, just going to give a brief overview of some of these things. Uh, this was posted 35 minutes ago. Pope Francis says he's deeply saddened over the death of Queen Elizabeth. Now, here's the thing. A born-again uh, Bible-believing saint would not be mourned by the Pope. Okay, It's just that simple. Uh, the Pope can't stand true born-again saints. And it says here, Pope Francis said on Thursday that he was deeply saddened by the death of Queen Elizabeth II to, uh, and offers his condolences to her family and her successor, King Charles, who again, would just be a submissive to the Pope, like Revelation 17, 18 says, who reigns over the kings of the earth. And here's a picture of her meeting, uh, make sure I'm full screen, meeting with the Pope in Rome. Uh, it goes all on, on there, right there. Here's another article. Uh, if the thing will actually load. Yeah, the Pope is, is praising her tireless servants to the good of the United Kingdom, which, yeah, she may have done some good stuff, but again, who is doing it? It's the Pope. You know, that's who she serves. Uh, the Pope has expressed his sadness over the death of Queen Elizabeth II in a telegram addressed to her son, now King Charles III, in which he praises the monarch's tireless service to the good of the United Kingdom and the Commonwealth. Well, the truth, is, truthfully speaking, if you wanted to really do good for your country, you'd break away from the Pope and... You know, first of all, you would not go meet with the Pope in Rome because the source of the problems, especially when it comes to the Muslim immigration, is Rome. Because why? Rome is the mom of Islam. And they got the Pope right there. Uh, and then they got, again, I'm not going to read this whole thing, but then here, this other article right here on the National Catholic Register, uh, Queen Elizabeth encounters with, with five popes. So that's, that's, again, when you have a 70-year reign, you're going to have a lot of popes you're going to encounter. And here's a look back at the five popes the Queen met during her lifetime. Here's her with Pope Francis. And then, so, uh, no thanks. Don't want to join the, the Rosary Crusade, uh, which, you know, again, what's the Rosary? It's, it's pagan, uh, vain repetitions, which, side issue. 
So here's her and Pope Francis in 2014. When Queen Elizabeth II met with Pope Francis and the Vatican in April 2014, she gave the Pope a food hamper filled with local delicacies and a bottle of Bemoro whiskey. Uh, the meeting marked the 100th anniversary of the reestablishment of diplomatic relations between the, the United Kingdom and the Holy See. Again, showing her allegiance to the Pope in Rome. And she meets with Pope Benedict back in 2010. Uh, yeah, Pope Benedict, the evil emperor himself, you know. Uh, I used to always wonder too if, if you know, I guess he looks all old and frail in his photos. You gotta wonder if it's, you know, he may, I'll, I'll put it this way, he may look old and frail, but you never know, he could sh shoot some force lightning out of his hands at any moment if someone, you know, tries to go after him or someone tries to get out of line. You never know. I mean, I mean, he looks just like the evil emperor, emperor from Star Wars. It's, it's actually kind of funny, but um, then you got her meeting with Pope John Paul back in uh, 1980, 82, in the year 2000. Uh, and again, you know, showing her allegiance to, the, uh, the basically the vicar of Satan, I'll put it that way, in Rome. Then he got uh, back in 19, 1961, she meets with again the Pope, Pope Pius, back in 1951, uh, and that's the end of the article right there. But basically, the bottom line is, is again, you know, who is she a servant of? Rome. So, this outpouring of grief, uh, I mean, again, it's always the lost secular, you know, Hollywood Jesuit. You know the Jesuit Illuminati elites in Hollywood who are you know outpouring this grief. You see, when you're loved by the world, that's a bit of a problem, isn't it? It talks about in uh, Luke chapter six. Um, also, I believe it's Luke or Mar uh, Matthew chapter six talks about that as well. Matthew chapter five, I believe it is. Uh, not off the top of my head. again. This video is not is not uh, planned. It just is kind of on the spot, so that's why I may sound a bit rusty. But First John chapter two verse fifteen to sixteen talks about you know the love of the world is you know or sorry James chapter four verse four I do apologize talks about the love of the world makes you the enmity of God but then also First John chapter two verse I believe it's fifteen to sixteen also condemns you know the love the love of the world and the lust of the flesh lust of the eyes all that stuff so the bottom line is is that all this outpouring of grief is misplaced it's that simple so just wanted to point that out again just just on the spot uh, been all over the news recently just again. Uh, just wanted to point that out because all the outpouring of grief, it is a bit misplaced. Again, Revelation 17, 18. Uh, who, let, let me go back to that verse again. Revelation 17, 18. You know, the woman which thou sawest is that great city which reigneth over the kings of the earth. Then you also got, for example, uh, I think it was Revelation 18, verse 2, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, Revelation chapter 18, verse 24, I do apologize. And in her was found the blood of the prophets and of saints and of all that were slain upon the earth. You know, yeah, Roman Catholicism has always been the most bloodthirsty religion ever. Uh, I mean, when, when Rome ruled the UK, I mean, that was a bloodbath. Roman, or sorry, not Romans. Revelation chapter 17, verse 6, I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. Plain and simple. And I should point this out as well. The whole Anglican uh, Church of England system, while they do have, you know, some stuff they reject of Roman Catholicism, when you get down to the crux of the matter, it is just repackaged Romanism. You know, yeah, they, they reject a lot of the heresies of Rome, but in their practice and their a lot of their, their customs, it's just repackaged Romanism. Plain and simple. So, just thought I should point that out as well. So, anyway, I just wanted to cover that recent news. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with, be with all the brethren. Goodbye. Thank you.